So this video is going to be very interesting and I'm very excited. Okay. This is Pierre XO. Oh my gosh. A few years ago, a couple years ago, I made a video about him in terms of levels and he was not happy with me. He did a whole live stream basically being very upset with me, which is so fair. Human's going to human. I absolutely understand like who is this girl on the internet rating your introspection. I understand why you're upset, but also like, thank you for proving my point, you know, <laughs> but also like peace and love. Human's going to human. So again, um, I used to watch him and Richard and I used to watch their podcast and they just felt so cynical and egotistical and narcissistic to me. And they just felt like twos very angry at the world or maybe even a three angry at the world. Like they were just so angry that I was like, bro, grow up. Well, they were literally bragging about how they're introspective and everyone's dumb. And I'm like, oh yes, because yeah, the edgy edge lord, you know, I'm smart and everyone's stupid is definitely what introspection's about. So definitely like lacking in humility is definitely a good sign of introspection. This is me being sarcastic for all the autists. I'm being sarcastic, okay? So let's watch because one of you sent me this in the Discord and said, ooh, Pierre's learning. So let's see. Let's see because Pierre's been on the internet forever and him and Richard have been together forever in terms of like content creation so fine let's see this is called the internet is worse than ever i swear to god whoever sent this to me in the discord y'all better be right you guys said i think he sounds like he's popping bubbles let's go because remember a two can pop a thousand bubbles and still be a two right which is still great but introspection is a very vast relationship with the self and with existence right okay let's see how pierre has uh has uh formed in the last couple of years because I genuinely after he got mad at me I was just like okay I'll have fun bro and I didn't watch his stuff so let's see I complain about social media and the internet quite a lot even True. though it's more of a that's why I didn't like him and Richard they were complainers and I don't like complainers you can vent but if you literally complain all the time sir ma'am that's not good for your skinner hair though Pierre's looking fine as usual because you know like a love-hate relationship because I wouldn't know what I would actually do without the internet. So for me, uh, it was a very, very more of an accepting place for a freak like me growing up where I didn't really belong in most places. And the internet at the time and early gaming and message boards and forums were like a place that I felt really comfortable in. And I've loved the internet ever since then. Well, in the last, I guess- uh Okay, true. The internet has always been a home for somebody as neurodivergent and weird as myself, and it's only gotten better. The internet is a wonderful place. I am so blessed to be here. Thank you for spending your time with me. The internet has become a better and better place for me, mostly because I've obviously had a much healthier relationship with it. So very exciting to see what he has to say about it. I hope it's not negative, but the title insinuates it will be. Uh, three to five years, it has turned a complete 180. And that's why I've had a big struggle of like, do I quit the social media entirely? Do I come back? Do I it's with you, Pierre. I'm so sorry. You make it so easy. It's with you. The internet is a great fucking place. I've met the best people on the internet, talked to the best audiences, had the best experiences. My internet experience is getting better because I'm getting better, which means it's a reflection Pierre's having with the internet. The internet is so vast. Can you imagine thinking the internet sucks and not realizing it's because you're on it? <laughs> do I quit? Eventually... I landed on a compromise, and that is to use social media very, very consciously. Long story short, I basically just used it to only dive in to deeper interests of mine and to basically not, let's just say, put myself out there in a provocative way so that I just, I don't have to deal with all of the like craziness and the nonsense of the internet abuse that is just waiting to attack you for. So uh, I found this video from a very, very beautiful channel. I highly recommend this channel. It's amazing stuff with beautiful animations talking about like space aliens and society and stuff. So obviously, as you can see, I'm super into that. Uh, it's called Kurt Kurz Gesat in a nutshell. In 2022, nearly half of Americans expected a civil war in the next few years. One in five now- Which is obviously silly. Like we're not gonna go to war. We literally can barely get out of bed to go to work. Like modern day Americans are actually going to have a civil war, maybe parts of the country, but a lot of us do not have time for this. I believes political violence is justified. And it's not just the US, but around the world. People increasingly see themselves as part of opposing teams. I mean, humans going to human, right? There are many different reasons for this, but one gets blamed a lot, social media. 
Social media divides us, makes us more extreme and less empathetic. It riles us up or sucks us into doom scrolling, making us stressed and depressed. Yeah, there's a saying going around now, and it's basically the internet was an escape from reality back then, and now reality is an escape. Mm. See, the internet for me was always a tool to find the most to find reality. The internet is just a reflection of reality because it's a reflection of humans. Books, anime, everything. You know what I mean? Oh, Black Slime, welcome. Ma'am, do you read philosophy? Yes, I've read thousands of books. Highly recommend everyone and everything. Read, 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 consume, consume, consume. So you can better understand. See, I think everything humans make is nature. So you can't escape from nature itself because it's all around us, including everything we create. From the internet. And basically what uh, the beginning of this clip is basically talking about is something that I think was a direct impact on me being ent entirely sick of being on the internet, being a public figure and running a platform, but also even enjoying social media because the internet that I grew up with for most of my life has always been a zone where people with really niche uh, special interests, whether that even be like music to video games and stuff, to talk and, and to share those specific interests with each other. And if there were arguments, it was never about like a person's character. It was always about like, you know, Bruce Lee would actually like beat Iron Man if he had jetpacks for legs or like just like really. Those things still exist. Like literally it's the internet. Every, there's no like, guys, people who are like the internet used to be better are like the people who are like America used to be better. If you think the internet used to be better, you might as well wear a Trump hat. Make America great again. Make the internet great again. Like there is no time in history in which like things are always better in the past. There's only moving forward, right? Like going back to the past is going back to the illusion of the experience you had in your own individual consciousness. It has nothing to do with the reality of everyone else having it. There are always going to be people who are like, the internet was better this one. The internet was better this one. The internet was better this. Th okay, sir. Like, if the internet can be the same, if not better now, you just got to find it. That's why I say everything's about you. The problem you have with the world is a problem you have with yourself, right? You're, if you have a problem with someone or something, right, it's a problem you're having with yourself. Because you're, look at me with my potato chip. Very wise, Brittany. Very wise. But okay, you're either upset you can't change it, upset it's not the same that it used to be, or upset that you can't accept it for who it is or what it is. Nerdy arguments in general. And that's the internet that... I want to use it for if they're going to be arguments, it better be about like nerdy things, not like justifying political violence. Um, so get off the political violence bubble, bro. Go back into the fun bubbles. People act like, oh, everything has changed. Everything has changed. Sir, use Google and find those bubbles again, sir. That's annoying, really terrible. And that's definitely I still refuse any engagement with anything political or or I guess anything that involves social controversy to a certain degree, stay away from it completely. It's all, you know, gaming, VR, boxing, music related stuff, and the list goes on. But in terms of this type of thing, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I'm completely over it. You've probably heard about online filter bubbles. Algorithms give you exactly what you want or what they think you want. Ooh, bubbles. But you only see information that shows you opinions that agree with yours, while dissenting opinions or information are filtered out. Since you only see content close to your worldview, more extreme and toxic opinions suddenly seem... That's just because you guys don't know how to use search engines, bro. You guys don't know how to use the internet. You're boomers. Guys, I'm a boomer, and I know how to get information that's different from the information I consume. Like... I do that all the time by asking you guys opinions or going on Google and figuring it out or like literally asking my partner. But like there are ways to do it. You can also use a VPN and go to different country servers and like use those. You know what I'm saying? Less extreme. You're trapped in a radicalizing filter bubble and your view of the world becomes narrower. Hmm. But the bubble exists everywhere. See how they reference the internet bubble? The bubble's also in your own world view, right? And more extreme. But is that true? There's nothing enlightened about having the opinion that the internet is like a place that reinforces your beliefs. That's everywhere. Go somewhere. Go to a cafe. Go to a group. Go. Everyone's reinforcing their beliefs. Everyone's always making a prescription. Extreme filter bubbles seem to be rather rare. Studies that investigated what people actually look at online or are shown by search engines found little evidence that you're ideologically isolated. It's the exact opposite. 
online, you are constantly... And also, please remember, until recently, most people died and lived in a two-mile radius of where they were born. That's a bubble. Everything's a bubble. Everything is literally a bubble. But literally, like, the internet's just another bubble. What about people who don't have the internet? You know, a third of the world's population doesn't have the internet and never has. What do you think they're doing? Confronted with... You think they don't have war? <clears throat> Or they don't have teams, or they don't have sides. Opinions and worldviews that are not your own. It turns out that the place where you are the most ideologically isolated is your real life in the real world with real people. I thought about this because I actually believed this theory quite for qu quite a long time. I mean, you hear it a lot where people are like, it's just echo chambers, echo chambers, echo chambers, and then anybody who disagrees, everybody goes crazy. However, it's right. In real life, your sample size of your social circle. Oh, he's discovering bubbles. Ooh, he's discovered bubbles. Yes. Now take this and expand it out and then realize you'll never get rid of the bubbles. And that's why, because like perception, but ooh, he's discovering bubbles. And your cultural idea. But does he realize it doesn't just like it? Okay, let's see. He is and stuff is so heavily limited, which is probably why. It seems so much more peaceful in- Remember when he was really mad at me on the internet for saying he was in a bubble? Isn't that funny? I wonder if he realizes I was right. But probably not, because his bubble won't let him. Real life. Because everybody within that reality space already share so much in common, whether that be like, I guess, worldviews and political views generally, maybe culturally as well. So- there's not so many people just screaming their opinion out on the streets as well. So that heightens the amount of... Uh, Bryson, the internet invented tribalism, girl. A confrontation that you would usually get unless you look innately different. You know, for me, I'm pointing at me because the world revolves around me. No, uh, it's more so I've moved around so much in my life and I've traveled so much. And obviously I have been... A target in a few of these. I love that he he is really well traveled. Pierre is extremely well traveled, but he didn't pop a bubble until now. Isn't that interesting? He's like, see how I say people can be world travelers. They can speak multiple languages. They can do a lot of things. They can be minorities, and it still isn't enough to pop an, pop enough bubbles. So he watched this video or this channel on the internet, and had a bubble pop and realized, wait, are we in bubbles? Right? Oh my gosh, interesting. Like, what do we do? Right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Stephanie, you remember his audience was on me on, on me for that? His audience was so mad at me, right? His bubble won't let him. Can you explain that for, to me? Yeah, of course. So basically, like he's discovering bubbles, but he's relating it to the internet and he's going to point the finger at the internet, right, for tribalism. But the dilemma is like everyone lives in a bubble. We all have our ideas of bubbles. So I made a video about him a couple years ago and it, him and Richard were making this like podcast and going back and forth. And it, again, they were playing the game of like, I know more than everyone else. I'm the one who knows more than everyone else. But look at him making a video right now explaining the internet bubbles. He's like literally, it's so fun. So his bubble probably won't let him at this moment realize that Britney girl that I was so mad at a couple years ago was right because he's going to see me as saying like, oh, it's, she's just in an internet bubble reinforcing her beliefs. And to the extent that's always true. But also I'm, I was, do you get what I'm saying? Like he, it, well, let's get through the video, but I have a feeling he's not going to be able to recognize that like, oh, that Britney girl that was trying to tell me, like I could be doing more, but you know, he wasn't there yet. Cause like, he's just discovering this. This is him telling us where he's at. Most of my audience has already had this happen. Most of my original, most of my audience has been here for two years at least, has already had this bubble pop because we talk about it all the time. He's making a video saying, I just discovered this thing. And all of us are like, nope. Yep. Exactly, bro. Now expand it out to the universe. Now remember, the bubble you have on the internet expands to your cultures, expands to your beliefs, expands to the universe itself, and then expands to your consciousness. So when you sit here and you think, I know everything or I know things, the eventual bubble pop you should have is that, like, I don't know anything. And I'm just a person processing information to the best of my ability. And we are all just people with beliefs. We're pushing on each other and ourselves because it's scary admitting that we don't know. So what we do is we double down into a bubble that tells us we know. And that makes us feel confident about ourselves and makes us feel justified in being angry at other people because, like, I know and she doesn't know or he doesn't know. But we don't know. We just believe we know. So let's see if Pierre knows the difference between belief and knowing through this video.
these places. Oftentimes, people can be really nice, and they just be, find me quite exotic, interesting. Uh, I've had situations where I'd be harassed or maybe even remotely assaulted or almost getting in fights quite often at times. So, uh, however, one thing after I've, I basically entertained this idea where I'm like, is it... Mm. I, um... You said uh, Richard has done a lot of work on narcissism. It's why a lot of people think he's a narcissist, like Dr. Romani, because they're so obsessed with narcissists. It's almost like, are you a narcissist, dude? Oh, what's his name? Um, the therapist on the internet who is a narcissist, and he talks about narcissism a lot. He's really popular. I don't love his work. But he talks about being a narcissist. Oh, what's his name? Same thing. Like, you dedicate your content. That's why I think, like, what you dedicate your content to is a reflection of you. So if you dedicate your content to drama, like that is you. If you dedicate your content to like a, a, like narcissism, a part of me is like, are you a narcissist? Because like I, I can't spend time in that bubble for very long. It exhausts me. Like I don't get like excited to talk about people suffering from a personality disorder all day. I can't even do that about borderline. I literally can't even spend like I, my channel isn't a borderline channel, right? So I kind of feel like the content you make is sort of a reflection of like what you think about all the time. I could never. I could never. You know what I mean? So that's why some people think Richard is a narcissist because he spends – him and Dr. Romani spend so much time obsessed with narcissists and being so hateful about them that I'm like, relax, bro. Actually, the reason of echo chambers being the source of the issues – the video will get into it in a second. But for me, I have always found more belonging and understanding in online communities. And I thought about why as opposed to my physical surroundings. As I was saying earlier, your sample size in real life is so small because it's just limited to your practical geography and what you can actually go towards. And half the time, you maybe don't want to go to get stuck in traffic to go out to places or you're only stuck at the university that you go to or the workspace that you're in or the family that True. you're around. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. And True. Though you get stuck in internet bubbles as well. And that's how that that, that is mm -hmm. how reality has been until the 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 current century. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I found the internet, I'm realizing the reason why I might be getting along with people more on the internet is because the sample size from just your university, your school, or your work is no longer limiting you. It's like the entire world, anybody from the entire world, if they're interested in Pokemon. They can all find each other from Africa. True. To Australia. To that's why I like, that's what it, we're using this channel for, right? Is like, I like talking about these things. How do I find people that also like talking about these things? Japan, and they can all come together with that niche interest and, and actually have a specific belonging there where before you would just have to like somehow find a Pokemon club. And if you live like in Nebraska, like good luck trying to find it. It probably exists now, but like in general, your, your sample size is so much larger that you can probably more likely find people that you get along with. And I think that even goes for dating. I think even online dating has improved quite immensely uh, in the last decade or so. And people have probably found more people that they truly get along with. Mm -hmm. through Obviously I found my husband on the internet and not on a dating app, which would have been about location. He's right. Like, I agree with this, obviously. Like, even a dating app is location-based. So I only ever use dating apps when I'm in California at my parents' house because I never wanted to date anybody in the Arizona area I lived in before. It was too small of a town. The politics were very specific. But in Cali, I had a better chance of meeting someone. But then the reality is, is that ultimately, yes, Sam Vulcan, Vul Vulcan, yes, is the narcissist study. Yes, that's the one. Sam is the therapist I was thinking of. Um, but Pierre is right in this. Like, I don't think, obviously, I wouldn't have found my husband if I was just dating in my location. My husband's in Croatia, right? Like, I wouldn't have found him. And it was because I had a channel and because I was sending out little signals like, are you my person? Are you my person? Are you my person? That my person, because he's also interested in philosophy work, found me through, like, the channels of the internet that brought me into his sphere, right? You know? And then he was like, oh, I think I understand this Britney chick. Like, I think I, I think I get her. And then bada bing, bada boom, did he ever. He got me so well, I put a ring on it, girl. I put a ring on it, girl. Online, I know mm -hmm. I definitely have, so. Your brain is stupid. Human brains didn't evolve to understand the true nature of reality. Disagree. Disagree. 
to an extent. Mm, maybe didn't evolve. Wait. Well, they evolved with the capacity to do it. So I would argue they did evolve. Wait, what? But to never through online. I know I definitely have, so. Your brain is stupid. Human brains didn't evolve to understand the true nature of reality. It didn't evolve to understand the well, at the basis it it evolved to survive. But if it's I don't know if I agree with that. That's kind of like it's no, no, I don't disagree. Like I no. But to navigate and maintain social structures. Yes, but like the capacity within the brain is a part of the evolution. Like everything the brain has done is the evolution. Oops, dropping chips here. But like that doesn't make any sense. Like, yes, at the basis, obviously, we like survive, we evolve, which is what I was saying. Let's bring up our chart. Let's bring up our chart. Where's our chart? Hold on. Okay. So obviously on the macro, we're all like energy within the universe that has evolved over time to create societies. And that society has individuals who live within it. And then those individuals have a relationship with their individual consciousness. But we, you can't say the brain was, who, why are you putting a, see, why are they doing this? Why are they putting a, a why to it that's like not even that's not mm -hmm. oh it didn't evolve to do this well then why can we do it everything we can do is what it evolved to do right like that's what it evolved to do was to do whatever it was capable of engaging with through the consciousness on the individual level like so to me that's the same thing like to say it wasn't evolved to do that is just like really strange you know what i mean what? Dropping chips instead of plates? Let's go. Until Are you referencing my cooking video where I dropped the plate? <laughs> About 20 years ago, we did something truly new that hit our brains like a freight train. The social media internet. The digital Oh yeah, because the internet created like introspection and thought. What is this video? Town Square. Don't you dare disagree with me. Isn't that crazy that No, what it's wrong. Wait, what? Train train about twenty but to navigate and maintain social structures. Until about twenty years ago, we did something truly new that hit our brains like a freight train. The social media internet, the digital town square. Don't you Dare disagree with me. Isn't that crazy that humanity has been around for thousands and millions of years? Has it been millions? Somebody correct me on that. I don't know. But this is the only time where we're widely and globally accessible in a minute, in, in a few seconds. Like if this was. Wow. Okay. This is a really good bubble moment. This is like a good pop. So he's just discovering like we're all connected. This is beautiful, bro a live stream you would literally hear exactly what i'm saying and you can be in zimbabwe and know and hear exactly that I, like that's never happened in the history of humanity no wonder why we're having mental issues and trouble socializing and connecting i guess we, we got to be patient with ourselves as individuals but as a collective for trying to juggle this massive shift in our social circles and how we communicate because it's only happened in the last 20 years in this situation. Well, okay. 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 This is a good, okay. I know we're like, I know the chat's like, oh my God. Like, yes. Okay. Good pop. This is a positive thing. This is what we want to see. Like this is growth. This is true. And I do think like this is hard for people to recognize though. A lot of obviously like a lot of us maybe grew up in a family that knew that or recognized it or something like that. This is like his opportunity, which is really great. I truly do believe that one day we will actually learn how to view ourselves collectively and work with our differences and all of those things. But we're still stumbling around right now. It's like a toddler is learning how to walk and play on the playground together because this is a new playground that it's has, has only been around for for such a short of amount a short amount of time really i get it you know we're still very very tribal and generally almost everybody would rather prefer to be in their own interest bubbles of shared things commonalities i hope at least that one day one day we will be so accepting of each other no matter what we believe that feels a little racist it feels a little feels a little racist um uh yeah, that's a nice thought, right? That's the thought of like, well, but like, no, because people will create new babies and those new babies will need to go on journeys. 
And those new babies will feel like they have, they, we can't deny people the journey of being a person unless we stop having babies and then we like die off eventually. But as long as we have new babies, they will go through new journey j- journeys and they will do the cycle all over again, right? Of not getting along and creating conflict and all that stuff, very important. Social sorting. In a nutshell, our brains are not able to process the amount of disagreement we encounter on the social internet. The very mechanisms that made it possible for our ancestors to work together in the first place are derailed in ways we were not prepared for. For your brain, the disagreement between yourself and them becomes a central part of their identity. And this makes it less likely that you will- mm, Yes, aliens. Yes, aliens. Um, I don't, uh, as you said, he just, uh, he just took it as truth and was like, isn't that a crazy fact? Well, because it's blowing his bubble right now, right? It's popping his bubble. And you said, um, wait, I don't know if you, I'm missing a first part of your comment, but this part of your comment that says we'll always be tribal. Uh, we can be more accepting that other tribes exist, but we will still want our group. I think that's the biggest truth. I think that is the most truth. I think the most true truth is probably going to be that even if we can accept other people are different, we'll still need to separate. Otherwise, we'll create conflict. Excuse me. So I think ultimately we will need to like be in our own bubbles, which is great. We all live in bubbles, but we'll need to, we'll need to accept that we can't actually all be the same or truly understand each other. Right. We're not going to truly feel like we can trust everybody. Right. Cause everyone's still going to understand in their own way. And again, we're all going to have babies. And those babies have to go through their own journey of distrusting people and not liking certain people because of the way they are and all of those journeys as well, right? will seriously consider their position or opinion in the future. If you hear bad things about them, your brain is much more likely to believe it uncritically. On the flip side, there are people who share your worldview and are maybe even more similar to you than many people in your real life, which makes your brain like them a lot and kind of hyper align with them. The engagement driven social internet makes it worse because it wants to keep you online as long as possible. And the most engaging emotion is, unfortunately, anger. <gasps> if we th- Hello, Kev. Welcome to the memberships. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it so, 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 so much. Think our neighbors are evil. How can we live together? Ooh, this is a really good conversation around two bubbles, right? This is about saying, like, can I see myself in you? This is a really good relationship of, like, we're all the same, but we're all very different, right? That's really good, right? I like it. Rock says, no, Pierre has been saying this stuff for years on his streams. This video is more him mansplaining something he believes to his audience doesn't know. Mm. I don't know. Kenny says, I feel like PRXO was just imitating Martin Luther King Jr., not a black guy. I know. That's what he was doing. I agree with you. I didn't say, yeah, he was obviously mimicking Martin Luther King Jr., obviously. Um... Yeah, I've watched like enough of his content. I feel like he's always been saying things, but the way he's presenting it in this video is as if he's just discovering it for the first time. So if he isn't, that's an interesting way to like express it. I've only ever seen like his streams mostly, like his, I watched, I've watched less of, I don't even know how many of these I've watched. I've watched mostly his streams, but again, I, I come in and out of Pierre's life. So to be fair, you're probably no more than I do. I'm sorry, I am sweating. Learn that in magic school. Yes, uh, I have firsthand experience with this. I'm sure everybody does. I'm sure everyone has at least gotten to one argument or like seen anything on the internet that pisses them off. And for me, being in this position with a platform, your brain is stupid, my brain is stupid. So inevitably, if I post something that ends up working people up, even at an unconscious level, and it's I'm seeing results from it, my stupid brain goes, oh, it's working. I better just keep putting myself out there and angering people somehow on accident, unintentionally or whatever, and engage in anger in order to grow the platform or to have more engagement. And this has been a very slippery trap for, I think, a lot of uh, content creators and people who are just on the internet in general. And I hate it. It basically, this is, I've never used the internet in this way ever in my life until the last few years because this seems to be the prominent narrative and the prominent emotion to properly engage other people to receive views to basically be a somebody on the the grand stage of the internet now 
unfortunately that does radicalize people and it causes just it just like it's just a toxic sludgy landscape for anybody who just wants to just browse the internet for entertainment or escapism or just to learn and educate themselves and everyone has a megaphone screaming at each other for this reason is there something we can do but like there are places on the internet where people just chill right like this, why is this idea that, like people are always attacked no matter where they are it's really not true Right. It's just like, but the problem is like you're you only feel attacked if you're visiting a bubble that you're not a part of in a way. Right. Like there's something mm, like obviously the Internet loves the the conflict. Right. We love the conflict. But there are places on the Internet that are chill, but also everybody has conflict. So like you have to migrate to where the space is like not in conflict. But every space will have conflict, like the crochet community on TikTok always got drama, right? Everybody got drama, but it's like drama is because you're interacting with people, you know? Do something more positive. Opinion part. One model that seemed to work well was the pre-social media internet old people might remember. Bulletin boards, forums, blogs. The main difference to today was twofold. For one, there were no algorithms fighting to keep you online at any cost. At some point, you were done with the internet for the day, as mind-blowing as this may sound. These communities worked because they mirrored real life much more than social media. Each village had its own... Mm. I don't know if that's true, right? Because for some people, the moment the internet happened in their home, they never left it. The only reason we got off the internet to go do other things was because our parents made us. Like, to be honest with you, if you were an internet person, like a real internet person, you never left the internet. The moment you had a computer in your home, there were people who were on it 20 hours, right? So if you were a person who left the internet, which I still do, which I'm mostly online, that's true. But I also like have a life outside the internet, right? Which I just like, of course, like I'm a, I'm an online Brittany when I'm with you guys. And then I have my offline life. I'm an online person. Like, I think that's a good idea. I think that's true that I'm an online person because I spend most of my life online. My friends are online, but I also have a real life, like a physical friendship, physical life. But that's always existed. That balance, though, with like leaving the Internet, that comes from values. That just comes from values. You know what I mean? The Internet doesn't force you to be on it, bro. Culture and set of rules. Maybe one community was into rough humor and soft moderation. Another had strict rules and banned easily. If you didn't play by the village rules, you'd be banned. Or you could just go and move to another village that suited you better. So instead of all of us gathering in one place, overwhelming our brains at a town square that in the end just leads us to going insane, one solution to achieve less social sorting may be extremely simple. Go back to smaller online communities. Because what our students- Yeah, but drama exists everywhere, even in small communities. But it is easier to be in a smaller community of like-minded people, so you are going back to the echo chamber, which is fine. My community is really diverse, but we're also very similar. We're all interested in introspection and philosophy and stuff and like people and social stuff. Like we're all interested in those things. But even even my community has had drama, guys. You think the Discord hasn't had drama? You all know. You all know there's been drama. And this is because no matter how small the community, people are going to people. Humans are going to human. Like we're just going to human. It's just what it is. Stupid brains don't realize is that we are actually all on the same team. Humanity on a wet rock speeding through space in a universe that doesn't think about us. We okay, I like this because it's explaining the macro. So in the macro, right, we are just like in a floating rock on, in the earth, but we're not all on the same team. That's a mistake because we are evolved to be tribal and we don't all get along, right? Because if Pierre thinks this video is true, he should call me and we should be friends, Right? And Steven and Destiny, whatever, we should be friends. But we're not all on the same team because we're all in different journeys, right? Yes, there's team humanity, but that only means something if you all have gone on the journey enough to accept that in a real way. And then even if you have, you're still not going to get along perfectly. Good people don't have to get along. You can have a, a the whole planet could be fives. The whole planet could acknowledge that we're all quote unquote on the same team and still not get along, Right. Because on the macro, yes, we're a floating bubble in space where atoms hitting each other, blah, blah, blah. But then if you zoom into the micro, like you just might not like someone's like dietary choices or you might not like the way someone breathes and then you're not going to want to hang out with them. It's not a say it with me. It's not a vibe. It's not a vibe. Like as much as we all should get along, we don't. And I think that's very important to recognize because everyone's on a different journey. 
right? I'm not going to get along with everybody, even if you're a good person. It's just the way it is. Even though I mean you no harm and I'm absolutely never going to hurt you, right? I'm never going to hurt you. I'm never going to attack you. I've never punched anybody in my life. Like I've never hurt anybody. I've never, like I'm not that person. I also like love you enough to like give you space. Okay. (laughs) Discord drama us. No. When? Oh, (laughs) we are all in this together. But until our brain, we're not all in this together. That is like a child's perception of humanity. We are only each other reflected back, but we are not in this together because this doesn't exist. It's a construct. You just made it up. We're all in this together. What is the this? What is the this? That this is a construct. And to adjust to being able to deal with that, we might be better off being a tiny bit separated. I love that. I love that. I love that too. I think that's true. I think it would benefit humanity to have smaller communities. But because we're all on a different journey having babies, right? I think that that would be better for humanity. Because in my head, I'm on that floating rock with a spaceship going zoom, zoom across the galaxies, you know? And I, and I do, I like humanity as a collective and, and detached. But when I have to interact directly, it, it does challenge my worldview quite a bit. But I, I love that because it mentions pre-social media internet, the very thing that I mentioned earlier, what I grew up on. That was such a miraculous place, man. What, what's fascinating about that is as how most of the internet was structured. Like if you ever went on an old message board, you actually had categories of what you wanted to talk about. So it would be organized in a way that- Isn't that still how the internet works? Am I crazy? Isn't that exactly how the internet still works? Right? All the political stuff wouldn't be slammed in your face because it would be separated. You would have to search for it. And if you wanted to look at the political. See how he doesn't do it. This is what I mean to say. You can know we're all on a rock floating in space and it doesn't lead you to five. Because the politics is a part of that floating rock in space. Politics is humans. You're saying I don't want to face humanity. I want to pretend it doesn't exist. You're saying Oh, this politics, this conflict, that's the worst part of humanity. That's just humanity. You have to radically accept that that's a part of their journey in order to go on yours. See how I say you can know we're a floating rock in space, but you still won't acknowledge that we're an organism evolved on that rock. And you're mad that the organism, right? You're mad that the organism isn't evolved to what? Your state? What good is being in your state when you can't accept that you're the organism? You need to, it's only, it's only so fulfilling. You need to get to the point, if you want to, where you either settle into a bubble where, though it sounds like Pierre maybe can't, and that's his problem, which, to be fair, great. But that means you have to literally accept that all of those parts of humanity you don't like are also part of the thing that is that organism. It's you. You're doing it right now. You're picking a team. You are saying, I hate the politics. I want to be on the side that doesn't do politics. Oh, so you just pick the side. Very good political stuff and piss yourself off you go there the instagram the youtube all of the platforms now that categorization is not there really because even you you will find mm. okay brit saying i think he's saying algorithms didn't feed you as much stuff you had to seek those things out but your communities did the internet is just a reflection of humanity if you grew up in a bubble your tv your movies, your newspapers, your billboards, they moved. That's the algorithm outside the internet. The algorithm has always existed because we have marketing. Marketing is algorithm. Like you can like take the internet and remember the internet is just a new way to have newspapers. It's just a new way to have billboards. It's just a new way to advertise. Like the internet isn't different from any other, hu- like I grew up without the internet and then I had internet. Life didn't change. The only thing that changed was like Pierre said, the capabilities of interacting with you guys. And that's great, but it would have been the same thing. I would have been in a bubble, getting fed an algorithm based off of a culture, and it would have given me what it thinks I should have needed. I still would have had to seek out, outside the bubble, new information. So it doesn't matter if it's on the internet or it doesn't matter if it's it's at home without the internet. It doesn't matter if you have the internet or not. And posts that have nothing to do with politics and then people are screaming in the comments about some issue like that that animation of that rock star rooster like going into the picnic of the cottage people and just like ruining their time but then goes back to the rock star look if you're having a hard time with the internet get off of it but you're gonna see the same thing in your real life unless you literally are away from people 
If you're interacting with society, if you're interacting with a culture, if you're interacting with people, you're going to get politics shoved in your face if you're American. You're going to get religion. You're going to get sides. You're going to get conflict. What bubble do you ever live in where you don't hear those things going on unless everyone's in a silent monk retreat? Go to, hello, Christmas dinner is going to be crazy this year because of politics, right? So again, like, if it's overwhelming to be on the internet, that's so interesting. I never feel overwhelmed by the internet anymore because I'm not seeking it out. Like, I'm just not in that bubble anymore. I know when I'm in the political bubble, it's different, but I'm not in it anymore. So it's just like, it almost, like, when I say real politics, it's not really coming up. Like, even when we discuss our stuff on our side of the internet, you know that's not really politics. It's just people having an opinion. When they discuss, like, gender, like gender politics and stuff, it's just a opinion. It's not even real politics. Like, moralizing has always existed. Have you never been to church? Like, moralizing, condemning, creating conflict, that's just, like, being raised in a home with information of differing opinions. Have you ever seen, like, movie reviews? politics like fashion politics like everything's politics it always has been since I was a child right name a time in history when everything wasn't politics or area that's basically a great visual image of this 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 cross interest thing that that can blend very un unharmoniously on the internet mm, okay Bruce says I don't feel overwhelmed but he's referring to the bubble that are overwhelmed and can't sh sift through it all Hmm. Interesting. Maiden says, I don't think the fiveness will increase as our postmodern uh, predicament grows. I think we're already seeing that what will happen. People further entrenched in their ideologies, villainizing differences. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Yeah. I, okay. As long as we're recognizing like the algorithm is just people being people. And then you have to be a person in regards to that. But the algorithm isn't like a monster, right? It's just like people being people. It, you know what I mean? Like people want it. They want the echo chamber. And they just like the conflict they find is also like it's a reflection of us, right? As long as like, I don't know. We'll see. If you've seen my last few recent videos, I basically have talked about moving around a lot. I learned to fit in with everybody. But at the same time, I don't fit in anywhere. And even hosting. Oh, Pierre needs to make a bubble of his own, but not out of resentment, out of joy internet platform i've actually if he does it out of resentment like running away he's a two if he does it out of joy he could be a two or a five but twos can do it out of joy or out of fear and fives usually do it out of joy because they're self-aware about like they're just in the universe doing their own thing what people are doing is what people are doing but it's not personal they're all just doing their own thing and it's great we've seen a, the same type of repercussion i have had an issue finding a constant main demographic because a lot of the problems and maybe the issues and how I present myself on this platform is a little is very very universal and spread out that anybody can just come in so maybe for a phase I'll have this group of people and then eventually the polit the political things happen and then these people leaned on this side and then another group came in because they liked what i said about this thing and then now it's like a mesh of different interests and social uh political cultures that are arguing. exactly your life is a reflection of what you put into it just like a youtuber who can curate its own audience and change the audience to be someone different by creating new content you can do that in your life oh my god discord ma'am <laughs> ma'am discord you're wild discord but you know what i mean he's explaining something that i'm saying like you have the see how it's you you are the responsible one for what you consume and see mm -hmm. going within my own platform it's a big reason why i decided to leave and you know it's it's a good metaphor with music like imagine if there's a jazz concert at a fancy italian restaurant and everybody is like a lot more socially like held back and then I come in with a fucking microphone playing some trap music or some rock and roll. Like, obviously, that doesn't belong there. And the same way if a jazz musician showed up at a rock concert, it might be interesting for a few seconds, but then, you know, Rotten Tomatoes is going to get thrown your way type of a thing. It, it's just got to make sense. And what I have seen on the Internet, my own experience and just at a distance is that there, there's like this pour over that's not balanced enough. And this organization that seems to actually make things a lot messier in a, in a non-positive way. And for me, I have learned to try to basically revert back 
to old internet intentionally. So what I have been so he's okay, interesting. literally mm -hmm. doing, like I was saying earlier, I just specifically look at the actual interest that I want to see. Michael Jackson music videos to VR gameplay to boxing and sparring techniques. And that's purely what I'll focus on. And these days, because I had only researched this for my, my own content creation and also out of my own intellectual interest, I'm burnt out of looking at social and political stuff. Mm -hmm. That stuff does mm -hmm. not give me anything anymore than okay. a goddamn migraine and a potential stroke at my age. Okay, good, good. That's like T1J and like you go on that journey where you're like, okay, <clears throat> the politics, like it's about winning and losing. Okay. And I don't want that. I purposefully just look at things that give me awe, wonder, joy, intellectual stimulation, mm. soulful stimulation. And <clears throat> honestly, my life is a lot better. And it's mm -hmm. honestly even better than if I just quit social media as a whole, because there is honestly so many beautiful things. And honestly, so many beautiful people on social media, they just are not the ones screaming on a megaphone. Okay, okay, nice, nice, nice. One of why you're wrong. And uh, I've definitely been shown examples of how positive it can actually be. And potentially this is the same reason of why I'm coming back here and hopefully just trying my best to fall. Ooh, I've also quit YouTube a few times on this journey. So it's exciting. You always end up coming back though, because this is the greatest place to have great conversations. So like, ooh, I like that. Okay. Foster, just a more genuine, a mm -hmm. more positive, mm -hmm. a more shared mm -hmm. interest and wonder filled. Mm. But I want him to say out loud, you know what I'm eager for him to say is like, I did it to myself. I'm the person. Because it was his own presence on the internet that brought him that misery. It's not like you're escaping the political bubbles. You're transforming as a person who no longer is fed by that, but you used to be that. Like you have to acknowledge that I used to be one of those people and now I'm deciding to be somebody else. So acknowledge the transformation. If As long as like he's acknowledging like now I'm changed, he's changed. But if he hasn't, if he's still going to point the fingers and say like, it's their fault, their fault, I have to go away from them, then he's not recognizing it's him. He's saying it's still them. So I'm, I'm think what, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is he saying, right? Is he saying that I've changed and I'm realizing I used to be that way? Or is he saying I'm no longer going to hang out with those people because they suck like losers? Like, what is he saying? Right? The community out here in this tiny little island. And uh, I'm just happy to have you along. Yeah, that's it. You know, I just thought maybe it would be interesting to react to. Oh, he made his own little, he's making his own internet bubble, which is great. He always had, right? Video that makes your mind go further as opposed to just angering you with watching dumb people do dumb things or like music <clears throat> videos. I like music videos too, but I don't know. I just want to try something new. That's what tickles me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's Peter XO, mm -hmm. but then they'll see you guys soon. Okay, what do you guys think? So does it sound like he's changed or does it sound like he's retaliating? You know what I mean? Britt says, I think he's taking some responsibility for it. At least he's being more positive. Oh, nice. Selena says, sounds like he's changed. Okay. Cass, could it be both? Yes. It could be a little bit of both. I definitely see some growth, which is good. Mm-hmm. Mm, good point, JJ. Sounds like he's taking control of his environment and looking for joy. Much healthier feeling, Pierre. I agree. I agree. I wonder if he would talk with you. Um, maybe. I mean, I'd love to talk to him if you wanted to, but he was pretty mad at me a couple years ago. So I don't think I don't I don't know if he's ready for that conversation. Um, but maybe. Like maybe he'll have it with me eventually. Um, but that's what I'm waiting to see. So let me see this. Hi. It's been a long time. I know it's already going to seem like another YouTuber. I'm quitting. I'm coming back. I'm returning. Apology type of video. And to be honest, it kind of is. It's about a similar topic, but I guess I'll try not to make this too long. But a year ago, I said that I'll quit social media entirely. And to be honest, I basically did. I wasn't going completely cold turkey because I was a uh, also absorbing and consuming a lot of stuff on my own. I wasn't completely not posting at all, but I definitely pulled back a large amount than what I used to. I was used to oversharing a lot about my personal life in many different ways with other people. I was always oversharing my opinions about things, okay. talking about socio-political, economic issues, about mm -hmm. 
celebrity drama, YouTuber drama, all of those things. And to cut back was a really big step for me. Okay. Now, around this time, I will say that I was struggling a lot. Great question. Uh, Jamie, if he made his own bubble out of joy, what else What else would indicate him being a two versus a five? The why. So twos create their own bubbles out of joy all the time, right? I see it all the time with people who are really passionate and peaceful and loving about what they're doing and they feel just really good about it and they've really just like created a good community and they're just like, this is my life and I'm happy with it. And like they do it out of joy. It's like really lovely. It's not out of resentment or rebellion or hate. It's just like, this is what fulfills me. So that's one way to do it. And then the five would do it um, in the same similar way, but it would be about them. Twos usually create a bubble out of community and fives created out of individuality. So, you know, depending, right, this is anecdotal as I haven't, I haven't interviewed every five on the planet, but this is the working theory I have, right? Is like a two usually creates a bubble out of, like if it's not, if it's out of joy, usually in relation to a community or a belief system. So like a religion, a spiritual belief, a connection to an obligation outside self. Or if they're bitter in a two, they isolate themselves, like the people who all want to live off grid because they hate society. I hate society. I'm going to live off grid. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's like less out of joy and more out of resentment that they couldn't find a place within society. So they usually isolate outside of it. So those are the two categories of two who make their own bubbles, one out of joy and one not out of joy. And then... If you do um, your own bubble as a five, what I found is like out of joy, it's because of the consciousness that you are and out of, um, well, I don't think a five would make a bubble unless they were joyful (laughs) because I think fives find their joy. But I also think it's a journey. So maybe you could be a five who is like still looking for their joy, but has understood or maybe the joy coincides with the beginning stages. Okay, I'm open to that working theory that you're not exactly a five because you're joyful. Maybe you could be like a five who's accepted and then it goes on the secondary journey of finding the joy, I suppose. I don't know if one has to come before the other or it has to happen at the same time. Okay, so I could see a five creating a bubble out of like, ex- like on the journey to their joy. But I think when you're creating a bubble, you're creating it usually because you've gone through the introspection journey of knowing the self. So it's kind of assumed that you would be creating that bubble out of joy. I kind of assume that, you know what I mean? Mm, I'm open, you know, it's a working theory. It's a working theory. Um, Rock says, I think both, he's mentioned recently that he stopped oversharing and changed his content because it was attaching to the wrong audience and he thrived off the drama, but also still blames the Raptors. Okay, well, we're gonna, I think this is this video, right? A name he gave the people in his audience who would critique and question or give him undesirable feedback. Interesting. Could you, Selena says, could you explain why it would be so bad if it was out of resentment in some part? Um, Like if it's out of resentment, where would that lead? Well, away from joy, towards evil, right? Away from joy. Resentment and joy are not, they are far apart from each other. So if you, I think people, if I was going to make a prescription, I would say people should be joyful, whether they're twos or fives, right? No matter where you are in the introspection journey, and if you guys don't know my levels, look in the description for the link. But if you don't know the levels, right, one through five, okay, I think you should be joyful whether you're two or five. If I had to make a prescription, this would be my goal for the world, but I don't care because obviously we're on a floating rock in space and your journey is your journey and I radically accept that. Like you're not going to do what I want you to do. I just have the hope for it. But resentment and joy don't have a relationship. You have to beat your resentment to seek out your joy because joy coincides with being like, a part of radical acceptance, whether you're a two or a five. So I just don't think that resentment has a place. You know what I mean? Same with bitterness and pessimism and just like being negative, like this negative, like negative energy in a person. You know, it's one thing to be angry, which is valid. That's an emotion. It's one thing to even be bitter temporarily and say like, oh, I think I'm, I'm think I'm being bitter, which is so ugly of me. Let me change that. That's like an emotion. That's okay. But then some people make it their personality, like their pessimism and their bitterness and their resentment is like their personality. That means you're drowning it. It's like, it's like it's sticking to your skin, like oil you can't get off, like sludge. And it's your job to take it off, take it off, get rid of it. But that takes time, right? It takes time, you know? Like it was a really, really, really rough time internally. Uh, Again, emotions are valid, especially if they're fleeting. But if they become your personality or attached to your consciousness, that means you have to you have to work on it. 
a lot of emotional issues, a lot of stuff that, you know, is rooted in my upbringing <laughs> that I had to sort through and it was... Ooh, wait, just Joe asked a good question. Is it bad to want to be a five or should it just be me? A natural progress that happens to certain people. Well, I think... I feel like I just want to constantly improve myself. I think that's beautiful, right? I think... I think you'll eventually realize like being a five doesn't matter, right? Like it's just a thing. But thinking it matters will trap you in a two thinking. So thinking being a five matters will trap you into two thinking. To get to five, you have to let go of the idea that it matters. Because it's about radically accepting that it doesn't. So it's a conundrum. It's like a, it's learning to make peace with the catch-22 in a really, really specific way. Manifesting itself in really toxic situations in real life and online life. And it was a complete disaster. Uh, around this time, the year or two before was Covida and, and leading up to it, I, I had a really, really hurtful breakups with really close friends, with even really close intimate relationships. And it was an overall disaster. Sometimes I'm just wondering, like, am I the only one that also is like trying to figure things out as well? Because sometimes I see online that a lot of the comments will somehow perceive themselves as if they have the answer for everything and that they know exactly what's right for other people and how they should behave. And I was the receiver of a lot of that, that I was doing everything wrong and how I live and how I look is wrong, how I'm, you know, what I want to make is wrong. Everything was wrong, you know? I just want to say, hey, what if, what if part of being human is just not knowing sometimes and you're stumbling around to try mm -hmm. to figure it out? And okay. sometimes you never figure it out. Sometimes you head towards until you're literally on your deathbed is when you figure out what you did wrong, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I've heard many stories about that. Mm -hmm. That's the introspection journey. He's right. He's like, we don't know. Radically accepting that we don't know. But what we what we should radically accept is that we don't know. And that's OK. But now it's a matter of like, do should we know? And the answer is like, not really. It's a matter of like, what will bring you closer to your joy? If you want to go down that journey. So there's like the problem with it is like it's layered. So there's the individual experience, which you're not obligated to change anything. Then there's like, should society change? Not necessarily. People should go on the journey that makes sense for their lives, right? Society should go on the journey that makes sense for their lives. And so for Pierre, it's this conversation he needs to have with himself. Like, is he the only one? No, he's not, obviously, right? He's not the only one. Everyone is doing it in their own way. Everyone thinks they're on a journey of figuring themselves out or have figured themselves out or figured out the world, right? So it's like, okay, let's go. Let's go. Now the question is, what's going to be Pierre's journey? What's going to be his anime? What's going to be his story? And that's the question, right? Is he going to go on a journey where he kind of like finds a bubble and settles, which is great? Is he going to make his own bubble and settle? Great. Is he going to actually have a relationship with the macro or is he going to think he has a relationship with the macro? Because a lot of twos know we're just like on a floating rock in space. Lots of twos know that, but yet they double down anyways and give into constructs. Now, Pierre has been breaking constructs for a really long time, right? He's like a feminine presenting man. He's talked about that in the past. A lot of people don't like the way he looks. Obviously, in this bubble, we love it. Right. My audience, generally speaking, I assume we all approve of Pierre's aesthetic. It's very pretty. I like it a lot. He's very handsome. He's very attractive. Like we like we the hair is great. The makeup is great. The like sex hair thing. It's great. But if you've known Pierre for a long time, he's also kind of and forgive my French. If you know him from his videos with his last love, like his partners and stuff, if you've seen them or you watched his content, he's always he's also like a hot mess fuckboy to me and always has been. He always seemed to think he knew the answers. Like, I want to hear some accountability, which I'm not hearing yet in the content. Remember, the reason I made a video about Pierre originally was because him and Richard had a podcast talking about how everybody else was unaware and everyone else was dumb except for them. So... I want to hear an awareness about that that I'm not hearing yet, which is why I don't think he's he's being somewhat introspective, but he's still in he's on the other side of it. Maybe he's not taking enough accountability to recognize like he's one of those people. He literally made a stream talking mad shit about me. And the way he talked about me was like very funny, which is fair. I made a whole video saying he wasn't that introspective. <laughs> 
but like, okay, like I, I need to hear some more accountability from his perspective, right? Right? I just feel like a lot of us should be a lot more patient with ourselves. True. And each other when we are all literally living life for the first time. Oh, speak for yourself. I don't know what that means. And around this time. What do you mean we're all living life for the first time? I was going through so many things. Wait, my, what does that mean? My personal life and my career and my online life because I was overworking myself. I was trying to pay rent. I yeah, I agree. His personality is not that hot. It's because he's negative. It's because he's a Debbie Downer. That's what I mean. The reason like Pierre's energy isn't great to some people is because he's a Debbie Downer, which is fine. As well as staying relevant online. To which is Which tells me he doesn't exactly have his joy, right? consume YouTube drama about celebrities that I don't even know about and covering social political issues and wars and you consume enough of that stuff and you will be that you will be enveloped in this chaos in your mind and you're not going to have any room to enjoy anything and that's where I was at now I think he it's a sweet sentiment he means we're just babies trying to figure it out it's our first life that we know of. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I don't get it. What does that mean? I don't get it. I think I understand the, the sentiment. I don't always, I don't, mm, I don't get it. I mean, I think I get it, but I don't get it. I, I don't have a very close family at all. I was kind of a uh, brushed aside as a kid quite often and I had a very unstable childhood and I was Oop, has he gotten therapy or has he faced his traumas? I was moving around so often that the moment I would be somewhat accustomed to a place and might have some friends there, I would be immediately picked up, uprooted and moved to another place and then I picked up, uprooted, moved to another place. Mm. Which was also a positive thing at times because it taught me how to get along with everyone but also I got bullied a lot consistently simultaneously i was also fortunately around every type of culture i was around see all these bubbles he was bubble hopping all of these bubbles but did he recognize that and examine it or did he just like focus on the fact that he was being bullied or abandoned or whatever else his trauma the question is, does he know he still has to work on his trauma? Because if you haven't worked on your trauma and you think like, oh, we're just like in a floating rock in space, you're probably just a two who's having a nihilistic like relationship with reality, but not a four nihilist on my levels, right? So again, there's like the actual nihilism and then there's like the performative nihilism of like, oh my God, like, is he just discovering, like, I can't figure out yet. Is he just discovering like, oh my God, I'm a person and I have things I have to work on? Or is he acknowledging like the world's been mean to me? Ooh, like we just talked to Smith. We just did a collab with Smith. Is he just figuring out, right? Or is he, you know what I mean? I think he's just figuring out. Like Smith said, when you like realize like, oh, I think my childhood was bad. It's like, is he just figuring out? Like he has to work on his trauma. You know what I mean? Um, Terry Mom says, how do you face traumas? I hear that a lot, but I find I can't. Find an, exa uh, an example of a practical step. Well, the practical step is so individualistic, right? But the practical step is first acknowledging that you might have trauma, which we, you know, you could possibly have. And then you would recognize the why you're even asking that question in the first place and the why of the trauma. And then you would seek professional help if that's your tool or maybe spiritual help if that's your tool. I recommend professional mental health. And I recommend examining why it's there in the first place. And facing your trauma is about examining it and giving it a place to rest. It's saying that I need to face this thing that is a, a, a burden I am carrying. I'm putting it where it belongs so I no longer have to carry it to the capacity I have been. So what I do with my visual practices is after I went to therapy, I like took all my traumas and I put them in individual jars and I put them on a bookshelf. So the bookshelf is still in my house, which is my consciousness, like my mind. This is a visual practice, okay? This is a visual practice. And I say, okay, Brittany, like your PTSD and your borderline and all that stuff, that's in a jar on a shelf and it doesn't need to be open 24 seven like it used to. I used to have them just like free flowing. And then now I put them in a jar and I put them on the shelf. And then when they are sort of like, sometimes they fall off the shelf and break and I have to put them back in. And that would be like, I'm a, an, 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 um, like a metaphor for it, like, you know, being triggered or something. The idea is like when you face your traumas, you're facing yourself. 
You're saying, what is this thing that is me? And how do I understand myself better? Why do I suffer this way? Am I, is it self-inflicted? Or is it something that was sort of handed to me and I needed to reconstruct it, right? I don't need to engage with my traumas 24-7. They're not that loud of a voice anymore. I've done the work. And as I continue to do the work, they will be less of an issue, hopefully, because that seems to be the, the pattern, right? So when you face your traumas, you're identifying them, you're giving them an identity so you can properly categorize them within your life. They do not need to be a part of you 24-7. They just need to be a thing that exists because you exist and they attach themselves to you throughout your your life, you know? Does that kind of make sense? On different types of groups of people constantly and also ages. I was getting along with people that were 60 years old at the time to 20 years old to 30. To, I mean, it taught me how to fit in everywhere, but at the same time, that makes you like fit in nowhere because I didn't actually know who I was growing through all of Ah, okay. Good acknowledgement. Britt says, I think before he talked to, as if he had all the wisdom and answers and now he's acknowledging that he's learning and living his first life. Okay, let's go. Good step. Good step in the right direction. This, I didn't know who I was. <laughs> like good, I was good. just trying to find a place I fit into. And nice. Very good. Kind of chameleoning myself as a honestly does pierre have borderline bros because abandonment issues moving around not having an identity a regulation promiscuity he could have borderline like i would definitely recommend getting assessed child because what are you supposed to do you don't want to get bullied you want to fit in somewhere so you figure out how to pick up other people's speech patterns and dialects sure. and very borderline i definitely would recommend getting assessed Charisms and make sure you don't say the do GBT will change your life wrong thing and you do this and say that and it taught me to be a really good actor mm -hmm. uh, a really good performer I guess because I was always putting on a show exactly so when you have an introspection journey you ask yourself like who am I what would I want if no one else existed not if no one ever existed ever it's just that if you shut out all the voices of everyone around you what do you want? And be honest with yourself. I want you to be so honest with yourself that you're like, I think I want pain, destruction, and conflict. Oh my God, why do I want that? Or if you're like, honestly, I just kind of want to chill. Okay, why do you want that? It's like when I tell you to do a, a thought exercise of meditation, no one else is around you. You have no job. I mean, you have all these things, but you're putting it all aside. You're just talking to yourself. What do you want? Well, I think I want conflict, drama. I think I want peace. I think I want pain. I think I want, and then whatever it is that you're really honestly you want, you've got to ask yourself why you want it. And then you're going to spend the journey ex like tearing it apart like, ex like a spider web, like I said to Smith, right? You're going to take the why and you're going to go, why do I want this? Well, until you find the real reason, not the first reason you think of, because that's always the wrong answer, not the last thing you think of, the accumulation of all the things that are you into the right answer. You're taking all the information about yourself to create a full picture of yourself, right? Who are you? What do you want? Who do you want to be? What do you want to look like? What do you want to feel? What do you want to say to people? Who are you, right? Classic Alice in Wonderland quote, who are you? I'm Alice. Who are you? He's not asking you what your name is. He's not asking you what's the name someone else gave you. He's asking who you are. And that is a much harder question to answer. And most twos who live in bubbles rely on the bubble to tell them who they are. Even the ones that isolate into their like cottages in the middle of the woods, they are usually the conspiracy theory of quote unquote the matrix or quote unquote the elites or quote unquote, I'm going to escape the government and not pay taxes and see how they're not really still themselves. They are just a reaction to the bubble, which is exactly what Smith was trying to talk about, I think, where like when you create an identity that's a reaction to the bubble, you are saying that I live within the construct of the bubble and I don't even know myself. And then there are people who really do know themselves, but only again within the construct of the bubble, but in a much more real and honest way, which is why the twos have a spectrum of C's, B's, and A's, right? And I think sometimes even B's can know themselves better than A's. It's just I did that specification to explain 
sort of the difference of the relationship with the bubble. So I think that's probably really confusing. Moving forward, I might change that. But C's have like the least. They're the ones who do escape into the, the forest to escape the government so they don't have to pay taxes and then get upset when the government arrests them for not paying taxes. And like the B's are like, I don't want to pay taxes, but I'm going to pay taxes so well that I pay less taxes because of loopholes because I'm amazing. And then the A's are like, uh, I'm not even going to pay taxes to such an extent that I'm going to make other people pay my taxes, right? They're all playing different games. We're all playing different games, right? It's like we're all playing different levels of introspection about ourselves. These are really like silly examples, but okay. Selena says, how do you be honest with yourself? That's a great question. This is about the need. You could want to, but until you need to, you won't face yourself. Until you're ready to be embarrassed by yourself. You know what my partner said to me earlier? You guys want to cry with me? You know what my partner said to me earlier? I told him, I was like, I need you to know that there are very cringe things of me on the internet that you have never seen. Like incredibly embarrassing things about me that I know don't matter. But in some ways, my very human brain is almost embarrassed that you will one day see them. And he started laughing. He goes, it's okay, babe. You, to be honest with you, I think very, I was like, I don't want you to think I don't want you to think I'm still that person because I've changed so much, but also I was that person. And it's very embarrassing. And he goes, he said something to the extent of like, it's okay. I think very little of the person you used to be. And I was like, oh. <laughs> because it's true. I think very little of her as well, where I'm like, girl. And so there is sort of this awareness that my husband has where even though he didn't know myself before, he didn't know me, he knows I was definitely somebody that he would have disliked like he would have looked at me like you are a mess girl you are drama incarnate right and I would have been like oh and it's true I used to be such a toxic person I used to be like quite an embarrassing person and so it is kind of one of those things where I'm like oh you know but it's true and so it is one of those like it's kind of nice that the person I am now he knows he's dating someone different he's dating a transformed version of me right and so it is kind of nice. Like there's something about it. Like he's recognizing my change while literally talking badly about the person I used to be because honestly, like <laughs> there was so much to talk bad about. There was so much to talk bad about, you know? So until you're willing to face that and to be so embarrassed and aware of like the person that you, until you're willing to transform, you know what I mean? Kay said, did he mean very little? Like he hardly thinks of you or he thinks very lowly of her. Oh, very lowly. Oh, he thinks very lowly of her. <laughs> he thinks very little, no respect. He thinks very useful. <laughs> like, mm, uh, uh. no, 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 no. You know, mm -mm. Nero says, um, how do you get yourself to need to be honest with yourself? Um, okay, have you ever like not eaten? And you're like, I don't need to eat, you know? And then you don't eat and you don't eat and don't eat and you choose not to eat and you choose not to eat and you choose not to eat. And then it gets to a point where like, okay, I need to eat now. Like I need to eat now. I need to eat now, okay? And then you eat. Eugenia Cooney never has that. Eugenia Cooney never has the thing that says, I need to eat now, obviously, right? Not everybody needs or ever gets to the point where they need to eat now. Especially when it comes to introspection and facing yourself, most people never need to do it because most people are content and very comfortable in the place they are, which is where I disagree with Smith. That, like we have this inherent desire to like be better. I don't think so. I don't know if I believe that. Maybe, right? Because like what is better? Like you could be better in a lot of ways and never be still you know so when you face yourself it's like everyone stops at a point and the question is like when are you going to stop I probably will never stop because it's too interesting to me and it's what feeds my curiosity but you know what I mean like needing I needed to do it or I was gonna die and I wasn't ready to die right in that way so again it's like need what does need mean you know what does need mean you know what does need mean? So you have to need it, but also you can need it in any capacity. Look at people who like have a kid and they change their life and get their shit together tomorrow. And other people have a kid and they double down and then they end up killing their kids accidentally because they forget to feed them. Everyone is different. What triggers you or gets you to change or moves you, I think it does have to come from you. 
People will say, oh, my kid made me change. I don't think it was your kid. I think it was you having a relationship with your kid that made you change, right? When people are like, I had a kid and it changed me, I had to change. They still had to do the I. They had to change, right? It's not that the kid made you change. It's that you became a person having a relationship with that kid that made you want to change, need to change to be better, right? That's how I would look at that, you know? Discord says, sometimes the trauma is in your body and you can't logic your way out of it. This is called intellectual bypassing. For this kind of trauma, you need you need in the body re uh, remedies like meditation, yoga, somatic therapy. I agree, definitely. Like, I don't know what you guys are talking about in there, but I absolutely agree with that too, where you can't always logic your way. You remember when I said I triggered myself PTSD because I was so joyful over my relationship? I couldn't logic my way out of that trigger. When I was triggered with the destiny conversation, I couldn't logic my way through that trigger, even because my body had decided we were in danger. And I was like, fuck, it's happening. Oh my God, this is sucks. Like, I, you know, I know I'm not over it. I know I'm still working on it versus the borderline. It's so much further from me, like splitting episodes and stuff. They're so much further from me. Like I haven't had one in so long, but PTSD still feels raw. Like I have certain trigger physical things that can happen to me during the day. Like today, oh, I almost fucking triggered myself like so quickly PTSD wise. I put on my sweater backwards. I put it on backwards like an idiot. I was like half asleep and it smothered my face and it automatically like made me think about my assault. And I was like, holy fuck. And like, it felt so strong, guys. It was like, I, I got nauseous. It felt like I was on a roller coaster and someone pulled me and like hit me in the gut. No, it feels like someone hit me in the gut for a second and I lost air. And I was like, take the sweater off your face, dumb bitch. Like, I was like, stop doing this. I literally was just getting up. I was just putting on my sweater. And the moment I put on the hood and it smothered my face, I was like, and I was like, oh my God. And I was like, stop, 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 stop. And so like, I, I figure I just quickly like, even now thinking about it, I almost want to vomit, but like, it's in my body. I know it's not reasonable. I'm in my house, but it's in my body. You know, my body still is like, it, it wants to feel this thing. And it like, ooh. Anyways, I got to stop thinking about it. Okay, so you know what I mean? It's in your body. So if that's happening to you, then you have to do like other steps in therapy and meditation and working through it. Absolutely. You know? Because it prevented the bullying, being a class clown and performer. It made me interesting. And also I got to learn. Ooh, he's describing too the seeking of validation from others, which I don't have. Um... Even when I'm bullied, I avoid conflict. I don't try to win people over. I just disappear. See, my borderline is very much like disappear. Like disappear, you know, disappear. So his reaction to this was to become like, I think, performative. My reaction was to disappear. You know, that's interesting. How to communicate quite properly. I needed to learn how to cut through cultural and age barriers with how I would deliver my speech. So those are all the fortunate things. But at the same time, now that I'm a lot older, I don't really have an idea of like who I am and what I'm doing. Nice, good self-awareness right here, buddies. Ooh, rock, this is like beautiful. It says, anorexia is a crazy illness. I suffered for with it for over a decade. I definitely wanted to eat and knew I needed to eat, but actually eating felt the same as, okay, just don't have dyslexia anymore. That's how introspection is in a lot of ways, right? Like that's how introspection is in a lot of ways. Like you know you have to eat, but you just can't do it. It's like facing yourself is very similar. And I think our mental illnesses, our struggles, our traumas are our beginning tools to go down that introspection journey. You know what I mean? I think humans were evolved to face conflict and eventually face our inner selves, which is why philosophy and spirituality has existed throughout cultures and for thousands of years. And I think it's because it is inherent in us to face ourselves. And it's more like, can we or do we or when does it happen? It's about time, right? It's about time, right? Um, Nova says, who are we watching? This is Pierre XO. We're revisiting him to see how he's doing since I made content about him a couple years ago. He seems to be having like a um, self-awareness moment, seems to be facing the bubbles. So let's see. And I think a lot of people might relate to that. However, the fortunate thing is 
When I said that I quit social media, it was because I didn't have a sense of who I was and I was carrying so many bags on top of my shoulders that I was collapsing under my own workload because I chose that. Nice, nice. And I had very to little to no support in real life. I had online support, but sometimes, you know, you need actual roots under your legs, not just out in digital hyperspace. And because of this reason, I buckled. I completely collapsed under the own weight of what I brought onto myself. And I was completely out. I felt completely out of control of my own life. I could not control any element of what was happening in my inter interpersonal relationships at any time that I would try to get closer. It would scare people away. Maybe it didn't. I'm overly emotional here and it's a problem there and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to get into the details of that because also I just don't feel comfortable sharing the details of my personal life on the internet Great. anymore. Great. And that's what I Great. Awesome. did constantly here. I'm technically doing it now. I'm just a lot more filtered with it. Nice. Good sign. But carrying all that workload of what content to make, absorbing controversial issues, but sharing all of the details of my intimate personal life for people online to judge, to judge my appearance, to judge the way that I talk and behave and my opinions and no support system, that would collapse anyone, I'm sure. So I was collapsing under this mm -hmm. identity crisis, internal crisis, emotional crisis, every crisis in one crisis soup. And it tastes terrible. So I didn't want to eat the soup anymore. FYI, I'm a little crunched on time to stay on my sleep schedule. So I'm going to 1.5 him. Thank you. So out of all of that happening, the only thing that I could reasonably do in the rational brain that I had left was, all right, dropping it all. I quit. It's done. I've done this a hundred times, by the way. I've quit YouTube so many times and come back. Best thing I ever did was come back, obviously. I'm like thriving, but I always needed a break. And now I think I'll never need that break again. But I did need a lot of them. I guess this is the only thing I can do now. Because at that moment, the only tangible thing that I felt like I had control of was me saying that I quit. I couldn't say I'm going to succeed more right now because I feel good for it. I'm going to have really healthy, stable interpersonal relationships. I'm going to reconnect with family and friends and that's going to work out now because I tried that. Yo, OK, again, not to like put borderline on him, but I will say like that for me, it was my borderline, too. It was like I need to feel in control. I'll shave my hair. I need to feel in control. I'll dye my hair. I need to feel in control. I'll get another job. I need to feel in control. I'll quit my job. I need to feel in control. I'll quit YouTube. I need to feel in control. I'll start YouTube up again. It's always about what do I get to do for me? When do I get to evoke my own free will and a big part of that was figuring out who I was right okay why am I doing these things like what does it mean to me what's the journey like what am I doing here I, I trust me my therapist ended up being a fucking creep all these other things but I tried I tried so many things from the diet to the gym to the therapy to the new age spirituality which means nothing without philosophy all of these things are useless without philosophy. You have to know why you think you're here, what you're doing on the planet. And I don't mean like in terms of a career. I mean, in terms of your consciousness, like why are you here? You know, did God put you here? Are you an evolved animal? Are you a floating like energy ball in space? Like what are you? That's why all of these things are kind of like they, they trick you into thinking they're giving you the answer, but what they're giving you is a tool. Right? Religion is a tool. It's not the answer. Spirituality is a tool. It's not the answer. Like science is a tool. It's not the answer. Everything is a tool. It's not the answer. Right? It's just because we don't have enough information. We still just don't know. And so we're figuring it out with in regards to like what is knowing, right? The reconnecting with the friends and the restart the channel, all these things, rebranding my image, post more on social media, trying to get my hair correct for the camera. And, and like nothing was working. It was just adding more stress to me and I was getting developing health issues. And so what I had control of was saying I quit. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I didn't really know what I wanted to quit at that time. But the closest thing that I could say that I wanted to quit was my job, my career, social media. So I literally did. I wrote like a really big, detailed goodbye letter. I posted it and I posted a video on YouTube saying I quit. I made a live stream goodbye, did a big goodbye. And it really did feel like a genuine goodbye because I really felt that at the time. Mm -hmm. In the moment, it mm -hmm. felt a lot better because it felt same. It felt so genuine for me to leave. And people be like, she'll be back. Maybe she'll be back. And honestly, I'm so glad I came back. But at the time, it felt so convincing to my brain that I was going to go away. So the last time I took a break was like six months. Was it six months? When was it I took the break after 
the whole debacle and I came back. I don't know what it was. It was a long time though. It was enough, three, six months. I don't remember actually, but it was the, I, I'm pretty sure the last time, like I can't imagine doing it again, except taking a normal vacation or something, but quitting, quitting YouTube, like taking all my videos down, like re like going away, away. I can't imagine I do that again. I'm so focused on this career. I'm so happy with who I am now. I'm just so glad I found myself. So it's much easier, you know what I mean, to keep the content going. But yeah, I was gone for a bit. Because it just felt like a huge weight was finally off my shoulders. So it felt good for mm -hmm. a brief period of time. It was like, oh my God, I can breathe again. Now I have a chance to like actually do whatever I want to do with not thinking about what content I need to make with video or how I should present myself. Am I pretty enough for the camera? Am I talking correctly? Are people going to judge me that I don't know on the other side of the world? Are they going to complain about how I'm behaving? How they're going to analyze my entire being and tear me apart? And it was so good to finally get a release from all of that. Now, I will also say around this time, I was finally able to reconnect with things that I actually liked. Mm -hmm. When people say like, I had to reconnect with myself, you know, it's very vague online. No one ever actually de like, explains in detail what that means. But in my case, I can say that what that meant was I got to genuinely re-explore. Let me tell you the problem with telling you exactly what it means to reconnect with yourself is it's not a mistake, but you might end up trying to live your life through me. I don't want you to do exactly what I did because it's not about me. It's about you. So if you're like, Brittany, what exactly did you do? It's only going to be helpful for you if you're able to really recognize like it. what I did for me is not what you're going to do for you. You have to find your own path, your own way. You can't still cling to somebody else telling you exactly what to do unless you're like running a business or like learning to write code, like live, learning who you are is about you. So I want to make sure that if you're like, Brittany, how did you do it? You remember that like me doing it isn't you doing it. And I need you to have a relationship with yourself. How are you going to have a relationship with yourself if you live Brittany's life? Because like our lives won't be the same. So even for my partner, he'll ask me like, what did you do? And I'm like, well, for me, this is what I did. But I don't want him to also live his life like he's me, right? My own interests again from magic tricks to Rubik's cubes to spinning pens to yo-yos to kendamas to skateboarding to video games. And as you're hearing that, you might be like, they're kind of cool. But when I was growing up, those were the most uncool things ever. Being on the internet was uncool as a kid, you know? So I left all of those things aside to be a less nerdier version of myself. And I did not do those things anymore in my time making this channel. Mm. I was able to actually explore those things again. And it brought me this sense of joy and, and nostalgia that I just hadn't felt in so long. Since I was like eight, nine, I was so young when I started doing these things. And it just, it just teleported me back to those times of when I was actually free away from the nonsense and the controversy of life and what's happening in the world and all the stress and the pressures of being a human. It was just me and the playing cards, you know, me shuffling cards, me solving a cube, me watching discovery science shows and all those things. And fast forward to towards the end of the year of me leaving social media, I had been so consumed by re-exploring all the things that made me happy as a kid to re-watching one of my favorite shows and movies as a kid from like Edward Scissorhands to Michael Jackson's Moonwalker to Bill Nye the Science Guy to, you know, exploring movies that cover such theatrical extravagant characters in a fictional world. And I was like, this is what brings me meaning in life. The beyond of what humanity is. The beyond of wonder and fun and awe. And I just ignored anything that would give me that for like the last 10 years. I'm finally regaining my identity, I guess, for what was left slowly back. And eventually I got to this point where, you know what? This wonder and awe that I felt as a kid, I'm feeling actually now, and maybe I can actually make the very thing that I want to finally make in the way that I want to, because I don't have anybody um, like- I will say this too. There is some, like I really refer to the youngest self. Like if you can remember any part of your childhood that was about you for you, like I had this, um, realization about my job how like I've always worked I've always loved to work even as a little little girl my one thing I like to do was work when I was it was Saturday and my dad let me go to work with him I was like the happiest little girl and I realized like if you go to your happiest time as a child even if you had a bad childhood something that was for you you can refer to that person when you're older right like I know I'm always going to be working because even as a child that's where I was the happiest I never felt like I only felt like, oh my God, I had to work when I felt like a slave to my job or I felt like I had lost that connection to myself of why I like working. And what I like is the creative part of work. My dad is an engineer, but he's so creative. Like he designs things and he's so creative. And my dad's an artist. He like plays music and builds things. And even though he's like 
engineering and numbers, he's an artist about his engineering. And that's where I think I get it from. Like we're artists, even though we do, I do YouTube and he does engineering. Like we're very similar. You know what I mean? Um, I'm so much like my dad. It's kind of great. But like we are, we are so just invigorated by work because it's like our art. So it doesn't feel, as long as we're doing the work we want, which is why my dad always said I would work for myself. He's like, Brittany, you're, you're going to work for yourself. Come on. And he's right. Like I do work for myself. I'd rather work 70 hours a week working for myself, you know, than 50 hours a week working for somebody else making more. Like I'd rather make less working for myself. And so it goes back to that childhood part of me that existed. And it's not something somebody gave me. It's a dream I've always wanted for myself. And I was lucky to fulfill it. I'm lucky I fulfilled my dreams. I'm lucky I'm living my dream life and all that stuff. But I worked really hard to get here. And you have to go through that journey of saying, what do I actually want? And it's like, yeah, I think I want this thing. But why do you want it? I don't want it for money and fame. I want it because I like creating. And this allows me to create and share ideas. And that's what Pierre is talking about, I think, where he's saying, like, what did young Pierre want? The young Pierre that was like young and happy, like what, what did he want? He wanted to engage in these, like these hobbies, these behaviors, right? Even if you go back and look at my adult life, like I watch anime all the time. I watch anime as a kid all the time. It was like my favorite happy place. I love music. I listen to music. Like I, I just recreated the best part of my childhood into my adulthood and healed as much of the trauma as I could. And I deal with whatever I have to now to the, until it's going to be healed off eventually. So for me, it was about like recreating the best parts of what I loved about life as a child and making it into adult life and also working on all the things that kind of sort of, if you want to use the word corrupted, that childhood. Because there was so much about my childhood that was great. You know what I mean? It's just like it got messed up along the way because people were all on their own journey and we were clashing up against each other. So until I stopped the momentum of the clashing, like imagine you're all just like bouncing against the walls and then finally someone goes, and then walks in a different direction so you're not bumping up against anyone anymore. That's that's what that's like, right? Telling me what I should make anymore. There's no content algorithm pressure. I'll just do the thing that I really want to do. And that was, I wanted to make this zany, you know, space pirate adventurer that basically travels through dimensions and fights dinosaurs and, you know, talks about how humans act and this, these funny behaviors that humans have. And that was the show that I would love to see as a kid. So in this like hypermanic inspiration, after a year of not making, I mean, two years of not making any content, I finally mustered up the courage to finally turn on that camera again. And it took two years for me to turn on the camera because when I turned on the camera before, it would just bring me this like post-traumatic reaction because it just brought me back to all the abuse that I would get online. Mm -hmm. So I finally got the courage to turn on the camera. I wonder if my video hit him at a very bad time. I wonder if he watched my video and it just made him feel really bad about himself. And it probably like contributed to this meltdown in a way like right if the timing is correct i wonder if my video felt like another person telling him he was like sort of failing in a way um which i guess is kind of good because i moved him into here hello you're welcome but that's all of life right like that's what all of life is is people like making us face ourselves and then whether or not we choose to face ourselves. And it sounds like Pierre is choosing to face himself. But I do wonder if my video came at a time where he was like really sensitive. And then here I was being me, really aggressive and being like, you know what I mean? And just in two weeks, I just hammered out like this crazy, bizarre, zany spaceship flying, <laughs> multi dimensional, shape shifting, like adventure story. And I was so happy with like the product in the end. Because this was like a mix of all of the science fiction, fantasy, bizarro, cringy, corny, cheesy, 80s, practical effects stuff that I've always loved uh, growing up. And then I released it. And then reality hit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. But like after being in literal space, since I was in space in the video, I was in literal space for like a year. We're all in literal space, actually, now that I think about it. But the world kept moving on and doing its own thing while I'm having, like, a spiritual reconnection and reconnecting with aliens and all these, like, nerdy things, like gaming and all these things that I don't ever talk about on this channel. And I come back after a year to a channel that was built on celebrity drama, gossip, the ultimate intimate interpersonal relationships, details about my personal life, um, sociopolitical warfare and drama. I came back to this channel yeah. and, like, gave them this... This, this alien transmission from where I've been. And I thought that people would immediately connect to this thing and be in open arms. And they didn't because people here are expecting something else of what they've known of me before. I'm not going to lie. 
I had a very severe breakdown. <laughs> I was like, well, all this healing and all this self-exploration for like the last uh, year, I think it's unraveling now because I- Interesting versus, okay, so this is the difference of the two versus the five. And I'm gonna put it in my levels. Obviously, I don't know this person, so like I could be wrong. But when I came back to YouTube this last time, I came back knowing that I was someone different and that the internet would have to be then someone different. And my audience would then have to be somebody different versus the times I came back before. I knew I was also changing, but it was weird to see people not connecting to it. But I will say like, see, he went through the transformation, but it wasn't, it was like, he's still in the moment. He's still in the journey, right? So when he came back and presented this thing and it impacted him that people didn't get it, he was still making it about other people. So when you're going through an introspection journey, you obviously have extrospection, which is everything outside of you, and you have to deal with that. So existing is Pierre, and then everything outside of him is existence, myself included. So you know what I mean? But he he was still looking for like that validation, basically, and he didn't get it. And it was like it rocked him again. You have to get to the point where it doesn't rock you because you radically accept like this is your bubble and your belief system and it's valid in its own way, but also it doesn't coincide with how I see reality or how we're mixing and matching. But it's really good of him to know this is really amazing. And we'll we'll get there as the video progresses that he realized that he had built a certain channel that had an expectation of him. That's that's really good. I am sobbing uncontrollably and screaming in my flat after releasing my the the passion project that I've ever had, I guess. I felt a lot in me after making this whole thing and seeing the reception or lack of reception. And also, I owe it to myself to make this video, but more so, I also owe the people that have been watching me and actually like what I do and have been supporting me after all this time. I feel really bad because I felt like, or I feel like I've taken that side for granted and really only focused on mm. the negativity and the raptors and the haters on this channel, which inevitably made me want to quit and became really, really nasty and Ooh, good point. really abrasive that scared away the people that actually was there for me. And that even goes for people that I've known in real life. So See, I do now actively block. I will actively block like pure trolls and haters. Like no offense, like this audience is too wholesome and too good and too like into self-awareness and like growth to allow trolls to come in to ruin the vibe. I used to allow them in because I was like, well, it doesn't matter, it doesn't impact me, but I noticed it impacted my audience. I actually noticed that it impacted my audience and it did impact me in a way because I would like challenge those comments, but then it derailed the stream into negative energy. So actually like, unless I am challenging someone, like the other day we had a pretty good challenger in the comment sections, unless it makes my work more clear and helps the audience understand me better, I will just like mute you or like block you from my channel because it, it does a disservice to the community here and it really ruins the vibe. So I actually think this is an important lesson to learn because there is a lot in the haters watching you, but if you build an audience of haters, You'll make money, but you'll be miserable. I, at least, am so excited to read all my comments. Some of the comments blow my mind. They're so interesting. But if it's just hater comments after hater comments, it's just kind of like, what? Like, what is this, you know? So I just, like, block or mute hater comments. Not that I get many anymore, but when I'm dealing with certain communities, obviously it happens. Or if somebody talks about me, I'll notice I'll get an influx of hate comments. I'm like, who talked about me? I can tell. Somebody talked about me because I'll get random people on my channel um, but yeah, this is a really important, like, this is just as a YouTuber, this is very important. I feel like I owe this type of video or what I'm saying here to them. And I genuinely want to just say, I really appreciate whoever was there. And in this time, I've really grown into more of who I am. And I'm just not that person of who I used to be, whether it's nice. for the past. Nice transformation. Viewers and the fans here. Hopefully. And the past Raptors and haters here. I'm not that person. And I need to move on with who I am actually am. So Pierre, is this another I'm quitting video? <laughs> hey man, first of all, again, I think we're all just trying to figure out like how to navigate life. I'm not consciously deciding like I want to quit now to come back to quit now to come back. I, I don't know what I'm doing either most of the time. You know, I, I think people when they're working a job, how often are they like I quit? I'm sure a lot of people have done that. They're, they're working so much and get all burnt out and they say I quit, I, whatever. Or they're even at an awkward Christmas or Thanksgiving dinner and they have a toxic family members just berating you all the time thinking you should just take it and take it and take it and you're like, I quit. Then you leave. But next Christmas comes around and next Thanksgiving comes around and you might need to work another job or you find another job that's better for you and you come back. That's life, man. You know, we never know what's going to happen. We really don't. And it, we, I just think we need to be more graceful and patient with others. 
and ourselves when we're all just trying to figure this out together, you know? And the question is, do I actually quit again? I'll just leave it as a maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and make more rash decisions of when I'm officially back officially. I'm just going to leave it as a maybe. It's a maybe. Mm, okay. So he's still either a two or like maybe a three, but like a two. So he's, this is good. This is really healthy. But this is still the question of like, so see how he knows we're in the space and floating on a rock, but he doesn't have enough introspection to know if he's going to quit again. That's because he's doing the whole like, we're just figuring it out thing. But that's a very different experience. Like than saying like, future Brittany might make different decisions, but this Brittany is making this decisions for this reason. It's like, he, he doesn't know the why yet. He's figuring it out. Very important and very good. Um, but it's not in relation to the macro. I'm not really hearing that. I'm hearing almost a reaction to the macro, but I don't think it's the same. I think it's when the two discovers the macro. So twos know we're like floating in space, but they assign it to something or they say it's like they, they have a different relationship with it. So I'm not yet hearing him say what I, yeah, okay. So like, I'm going to say two, three, two, 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 three, two, three, two, three, three, two, three, two. Because what I found through all Again, of I don't know this person. I could be wrong. This is that my actual passion and drive and fulfillment comes from wonder, awe, fun, and creativity. Okay. Okay. So he's connecting to what he finds to be fulfilling. I think he even referred to it as his joy earlier. And I love creating things. And it took a lot of time and courage. Yes, sir. You've been a YouTuber for very long and he's made very good like aesthetic content. Him and Sneeko too. Sneeko too. Sneeko makes amazingly good content in terms of his old content. I can't wait for Sneeko to go through this journey too, but Sneeko doesn't have the humility or the age lived experience yet, right? Which is why he's like a three, two, but I thought he could be a four, but I think he's a three, two. You know what I mean? Urge to finally restart creating things. What See, Sneeko's an artist in his heart too. He's an artist, but he can't allow himself to think of himself truly as an artist. Because it doesn't, it, but it, he is, he really is an artist, you know? I that I don't like anymore, I used to like this, was the back and forth discourse online about controversy, debating, connecting with people at an overly intimate parasocial level, sharing my interpersonal, interpersonal details. I loved those things at the time, but I really can't do that anymore. It makes Good. me physically, Good. physically sick and it hurts me deeply to do that now. But I love creating stuff. I love making videos. I like making music. I like making and creating the worlds. So I will continue doing that. And what's interesting in the landscape of today's culture, especially with content, is that you either have one side of things, which is TikTok, re Instagram reel, seven second content about some really silly thing that happened or some meme, right? Or you have what I see everywhere, which is just talking head videos, podcast clips of talking about serious subjects or like relationship advice or whatever. And when I saw that, I was wondering why I had complete creative stagnation. I, I literally had the worst creative block. And that was because at the time I was trying to figure out how to fit into the cultural landscape, a mm. content landscape and the algorithm of podcasting, record the camera, talk like exactly what I'm doing right now, talk about reality, talk about life, talk about introspective, like whatever, giving you advice about how to live your life. And introspection? That really, really blocked my inner child and, mm. and life. I love dressing up. I love exploring another realm that exists in our heads. I love twisting reality. I love the mystery of what we don't know. I love playing extravagant, annoying, flamboyant characters. That's, that's what makes me happy. That makes my inner child just jump. So is he going back into the kid bubble or is he making his own imagination bubble? Is he interesting? Okay. And with the current content landscape of the day, it's good for some people. And most people now prefer, I want real. I want somebody real. I, I want I want you to just wear a potato sack. And there's no makeup. Your hair has to be completely flat and no flamboyance, no jewelry, nothing. Just <laughs> talk about this is how you live your life. Cold shower, eat food, work, don't sleep, die. You know, and what's the fun in that? Maybe... We need to have more fun in our lives, more wonder, mm. more awe. And my inner child is screaming for these things now. He's, he, all he wants to do is play. He wants something to look forward to. He wants something to imagine. He wants a new world to jump in around and fight dinosaurs and go on spaceships and play with aliens. And that's exactly what he's going to do. It's so it sounds like he's on the healing trauma journey. I wonder if he's gone to therapy. I wonder if like this is coming from a place of that. This sounds like healing inner trauma. This is like that journey, you know? Is he going to do it here? Probably not. He's going to do it in another dimension, though. <laughs> in this particular... See, I don't know what that means. The realm of hyperspace. Am I going to post? Am I going to come back? Maybe. But I just don't think it's appropriate to put that side here. But that creativity and that inner child needs to play. And I will find a place for him to play. 
fortunately or unfortunately, it's going to be a little more underground. Uh, I'm not going to be promoting anything here today. I might start a new channel, might not. And if I do, it's a secret. But all I know from this point on is that I need to be truer to myself, but more specifically, my inner child. And okay. I'll close this off by genuinely saying to anybody watching this video, whether you are a lover, you are a hater, a raptor, just an average person or an extraordinary person, I can just genuinely say that I hope you find something that gives you wonder, some fun, and most importantly, some awe in your life because you deserve it. Have a good century in this dimension. I'll be flying around. <laughs> See you later. Okay. 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 Oh, there I am. Hello, me. Oh, cute. Okay. Interesting. Well, he's on the journey. Sounds like he's fighting. He's like facing his childhood trauma, hopefully with a therapist uh, and not just like dimension talk. I don't know what that means. Like gives me a little bit of worry. <laughs> like, is he going into like the psychosis bubble or is he going into like the acid bubble or is he going into the therapy bubble or is he just going into imagination play bubble? Um, we'll see. Obviously, he's definitely different and we've definitely seen a change compared to him a few years ago. So that's really good. And let's definitely have our fingers crossed that Pierre is in the healing my childhood trauma bubble and he's just using playful language to have that experience, which I think is fine, but interesting. Okay. I, I definitely see the change. I see what you guys mean. He's definitely not, he's definitely on the journey. So we'll check back in in another six months to a year and see how he's doing then, unless another video comes out. That's interesting. You know what? Well, I'm the last thing I want to look at, even though I know for a fact, my partner is definitely waiting for me. One last thing I want to look like a look at is um I guess this is the video is this the video yeah this is the video that must have he must have posted that he people didn't um exactly take well I guess hold on in a time where we and this is the power of awe and wonder we basically have everything that we've ever wanted don't you feel like something still missing. No, this is not an easy question to necessarily answer because as the human beings that we try to exist as, there's a lot of things that we're missing in the modern age and especially in the next coming near future. There is a plethora of things that are left unexplained. It doesn't make any sense. And why do we feel so entirely empty at times? And maybe we're trying to just figure something out that we don't even know the question for in the very first place. However, in my studies out here in the human experience, let's just say I came to at least one of the hundreds of potential answers. And that is... Ah! Ah! Ah, 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 for short, aka aluminite, aluminium, aluminum. I know, I have a lot of explaining to do because I have disappeared for at least a few centuries within my time and in human time, maybe a few years. Let's just say that what powers me as an individual is the very essence of wonder and awe. And I feel like I've been running out of it, which is why I've been completely lost and the spaceship, aka the flip ship, is not running, which is why I had to disappear for a little while to refine this very essence of this invaluable resource known as ah. Now, Pierre's a freak, bro. <laughs> Pierre's weird, bro. Okay, he's like, he's like super weird. I love that for him. He's gonna own it. He's really gotta own that he's weird. He's super weird. This is really weird. <laughs> I understand the vibe. Like, he's super weird. Like, I mean, I'm weird, but this is even too weird for me. I love that for him. Good for him. Good for him. What is awe exactly? When it comes to humans, they usually like some sort of- Yeah, he's definitely rediscovering like his like child, childhood stuff, which is good. Cohesive, logical, dictionary-based definitions of very, very abstract concepts. Where I'm from, we usually dwell within symbolism, imagery, and let's just say four or fifth dimensional shapes that really explain basically nothing, but it gives you a sensation. However, I will say, just for our sake, awe is the overwhelming feeling of reverence. Admiration, fear, produced by of which is grand. This is like too much. I'm overstimulated. It's it's too much for me. I'm so overstimulated right now. I like boring long podcasts. I am. I we're the opposites. I can't. This is so overstimulating for me. This is insane. Yeah, this is insane for me. Is this because we're watching it at 1.5? Let's go to normal. Let's go to normal speed. Sublime, extremely powerful, or like in awe of God on means a whole lot of nothing to me. That is what I consider the limitations of the human communication system. All I can say is, when was the last time you saw something so grand, so mysterious, so weird, so extraordinary, and so massive that you just stood there with your jaw wide- I can't handle the voice. I can't handle the voice. And open, and a fly. Fly. I'm, o I'm overstimulated by everything happening. Right. <laughs> 
minus the fly part. But let's just say if you go to the Sistine Chapel or some sort of medieval church, you look up at the ceiling, you see, how the hell did they do that? Humanity is quite a talented species at times. Or perhaps if we go into maybe a contemporary pop culture, the first time Michael Jackson did the moonwalk. True. Okay. So I, okay. I, I know what he's trying to say. I prefer this much more in a documentary sense, very neutral tone, like National Geographic tone. I like this kind of information and na National Geographic tone. And he's doing like the thrill, like the whoo, it's great. I love that for him. I understand the premise. I, I don't think I can handle this whole video. I'm going to be very honest with you. I think you should watch it on your own. I'm going to link it. I think it's too much for my brain. But I like this information in like a National Geographic tone, very monotone. It's very like, you know, when Michael Jackson did do the moonwalk, it changed culture. And that's awesome. And that's beautiful. And I'm I'm a much more of a documentary like documentary consumer. So it's a little too much for me, but I appreciate the effort. I'm glad to see him back on the platform. I think it's a good sign overall. And I'm glad we could kind of catch up with him. Um, we'll check back in, like I said, in a few months and see how it goes. But I am rooting for this change as it seems to be in a much more positive direction. And hey, that's great to see. So we're here for it. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.